some of this journey here to Parting Stone in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where it is super, super sunny, was to bring my dog, Ralph, with me to turn him into stone. I love this concept. I have loved it since I first learned about this company and first talked to Justin, who is CEO and the person who started this company and wanted to be part of supporting him. And then when we had to disinter and cremate my dog, this was the perfect answer of what to do with him. So we are here to drop him off and have him turn to stone. I think that's the nice thing is that if you live in the Santa Fe area, you can bring your pet or your human loved one's cremated remains and hand them directly to someone here at Parting Stone. And then you can pick them up directly from here at Parting Stone. You have human to human contact, you know your loved one, whether they are a pet or a human are going directly into someone's hands and you can be part of that process. Then they call you when your loved one is ready and you can pick them up right here in Santa Fe. Otherwise you can go through a uh, local funeral home that participates with Parting Stone or consumer to business directly working right with Parting Stone where you can mail your loved one to them or make the trip and bring them like I did with my pet. Every order that comes in we keep a log of the funeral home that sent it, the decedent's name, the order number, the date we got it, whether it's a funeral home or yours is what we call a direct to customer mm -hmm. and what it is, whether it's human, dog or cat. And we log in every order that comes in uh, by that. Okay, so I already logged Ralph in. And um, the yellow, everything is under a camera for, for uh, chain of custody purposes and, mm -hmm. and that. So this uh, camera is recording everything that goes on right here. So I've already pulled him up in our Odoo system, and I'm going to open up the urn, take out whatever paperwork there is. Oh, you're going to get the full. Yeah, he's big. Um, what kind of dog is he? I'll have Newfie mixed from what we could tell. Oh, what um, a cute combo. We were surprised just because it was only bone since he'd been disinterred. We had to disinter him and just cremated the bones. So we were pretty surprised, even though cremated remains aren't tissue, I was still surprised there was so much um, from him. I was like, well, he's hardy. <laughs> so I'm going to take off the metal tape. I'm just gonna rebag him because I see a leaf. Okay. Yeah, we have been losing a smidge of him, I think, along the way. Now guys, I talked to you about transferring and how along the process you lose. So there is a bit of dust in here of Ralph that is now going away. So I talk about how through the process, you never get 100% of your loved one and you always is a little bit of commingling because of what's in the refractory brick in the crematorium in the cremator along the way. And this is just showing that you do lose a little bit along the way in all the different stages of the process. We had a metal pig. I'm going to log the number. We had to, like, it was already in place, but we had to, like, format it for our needs. Gotcha. So a lot of it was built out, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. 
pretty crazy how much um, we can actually do with this system. Like search by different categories, um, track like interesting orders. Um, yeah, it's really full of information. And they also have all of our transfer points, so you can look up someone by uh, name or the manufacturing number, and we can locate exactly where they are in the lab. Yeah, which is yeah. Chain of custody. Yeah, that's a that's a very big thing around here. It should be. Obviously, it yeah. Should be yeah. 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 Any death care organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the order that you placed, and we also put the manufacturing orders, like she was saying, chain of custody, so you can follow both the order and the manufacturer number that's assigned to it. We also take a picture of the metal tag, part of the chain of custody, so that when it makes it through the process and ends up at shipping, um, the metal tag is sent back with the stones. If it's not, I mean, this is pristine. A lot of them that's are the ones that are on the body at time of cremation. Oh, so we clean them. We clean them as best we can. Yeah, that one's nice and shiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't go. The crematoriums around us do not put them actually in the process. They keep them outside and then reattach. Oh, okay. So, I think it's becoming more the norm. Yeah. Um, So Pat also told us they do tag the animals and humans separately um, because they keep them separated throughout the process here at the facility. So she puts a purple tag on Ralph here because he's an animal. And then orange for human? No, um, what it's color? just white for... White for human? Yeah, for human. I just saw orange ones there. I didn't know what those were. Right, orange. right there. Oh, these are... If the metal tag needs polishing, oh, nice. Um, so that when they get out of the kiln into the finisher, they will come over here and pull the metal tag out of the file cabinet, put them in this with the stones in the finisher, and it cleans the tag for us. Nice. Wow. It's just an added for them to see. Hey, we got to go get the tag. It needs right. cleaning. Very cool. So, now that Ralph has been received in by Pat, he is going to go to the waiting room. That is this space. Order All these cubbies. That Ralph is this is the waiting room. It is locked every night um, on both ends to Ralph try to protect me. from anyone coming in, doing anything naughty. So they, they Don't like those naughty people. But he stays here until it is his time to go for processing. The next step is the cremated remains go into the milling process. There are two size containers for larger amounts and smaller amounts. They, in that process, are mixed with um, some different components, some silica, some clay. They're liquefied. They're then put in a large bucket like this. This one, a big old bucket, lid put on set on the decanting shelves here. They sit there in full liquid form and they separate out from the liquid that had been put in to the cremated remains. That will liquefy cremated remains. Never seen liquefied cremated remains before, so this is pretty cool. Can only show you so much during this process. I'm gonna try and keep telling you about it as we go along. And they are left in this decanting area for about 24 hours and then that product goes into be dried. So here in the drying stage, they are in varying colors. You can already see the differentiating colors because as unique as we are as humans and pets, we are as stone and cremated remains also. Cannot show any of this. I, I don't show cremated remains if I don't have permission from the owners and everyone that is here, all the deceased, have not given permission except for me with my dog. Um, and we're not going to follow him through the whole process because he will not be processed for a little while yet. Um, so looking at some of these, there is white, light gray, super dark gray. 
yellow, like Gatorade yellow, all sorts of different colors. They're doing a lot of research here, looking into why are we getting all these different colors throughout the process. And then when they go to the kiln later to be dried, color changes again. So you never really know what color your cremated remains are going to be in the end. They have different mixing paddles for animals and humans. The paddles are color coded for purple when they're to be used for animals. So they have no cross contamination between animals and humans here throughout the process, which is, I love. Throughout the process, that each set of remains is scanned in where they are, so that throughout the process, you know where your loved one is. Now, by request, yes. you can ask that they email you along the way, each stage, so that you know, hey, your loved one is going into the drying stage, or hey, your loved one is beginning to be processed. They don't want to inundate you with emails. They don't want to overwhelm you, but you can do that. And then as Heidi saw us, if you question where your loved one is, like, ooh, I'm really anxious, where are they at? He will answer and he will tell you, hey, your loved one is in this stage, just to give you an update. It's pretty cool. In the mixing, once the material is broken down as far as it possibly can, they do add a little bit of water. And this end result is clay. It is a clay looking. They want to make sure that everything is very smooth, very thorough. Because from this point, they are then formed into the stones and then put into the kiln. And there's not anything they can do at that point to smooth out any bumps that might have been in it. So if they have to go back twice into that mixing process, they will. They want the best end result for families when they're receiving their loved one's stones. This is the stone forming area. Each table has its own label code. So when cremated remains arrive to that table, someone to work, they scan them in. And then when they are completed, they scan them out. So you could see if you're tracking exactly how long your loved one is in this area. stones go through a two-pass system. The first day that they are taken to the tables, formed, they then go onto a drying rack and come out for a second pass. They want these stones to be as smooth and perfect as they can make them for the families. They have a lot of ceramicists, artists on staff here that can form these stones and, and get them into the drying pretty quickly, about a half an hour for an order to go through being, you know, created into these stones, put into the drying rack. Whether it's because we're in Santa Fe and there's a lot of artistry here, um, or what it is, but this is the perfect city for this style of artistic endeavor to take cremated remains and, and turn them into stone, really. So these are the shelves that will go into the kiln with the stones on them. They can fit up to 12 sets of remains in the kiln to fire them on one round. In the drying process, after they've gone through that second pass and they go into the final dry before they go into the kiln, sometimes they get cracks in them. They then have to go back to the mixing process where water's added back to them. They're taken right back down to that base clay looking material and made into stones again and gone through the process for a second pass into the drying final rack again, then to the kiln. If they have cracks again, they then go to the hospital to have a little more tender loving care to try to get them to the end stage looking the way that they want them to look those perfect final stones for a family. After the kilning process, the stones are going to go over to be polished and kind of finished off. This used to be hand done for every stone. They now have some machinery that can help them do this faster, more efficiently, more effectively, which helps the time 
that it takes for someone to be returned back into the care of the family. After the finisher, they go for a bath. Got to get all that dust off of them, all anything that might be on them, and then they get dried again. And then they go off to be packaged up to be shipped back to the family. into a bag and then the decedent's name will be here um, we'll send the family sharing bags um, yeah we'll vacuum seal them in the bag um, so when they open the box this is this is what they'll find All right, he's back. So Ralph has returned from Parting Stones, and just like if I was shipping an urn or anything, even though he's stones, he still comes. Priority Mail Express with the cremated remains label. So. Let's see. All right, hold on. Just my paperwork that tells me what it is, who it is, and stuff. Very well packed. <laughs> you want to keep it safe. All right, with the box. What does it say? We take every chance to remind our staff that their work has profound impact on family. If you have a moment, it would mean so much to our staff member, Nicholas, to receive a note about how the stones have impacted you. Thank you from all of us at Parting Stone. Thank you. This is pickle. You can write this. Let's use, can you grab the scissors so we can open? Not yet. Don't open yet. Don't open yet. Oh, here, let me do it. I don't want you to cut yourself. So those are sharing bags, they told me. So that way, if I want to share a stone with someone else. So this is a little tag that says um, when he was solidified. It's made, he was made hard into a rock. And then, um, as they told us in the video about how they do this, they take his medallion. That was his medallion. And they clean it up to return it. You're nervous? Yeah. Why is it scary? No. So then his name is on this bag as well. Can I do it? Can I do it? Well, they're like, whoa. Whoa. They're like, um, not freezer packed. What's that called? And they, they take and they suck. 
suck all air out so that they're not jingling around. So he had a lot of cremated remains. Wow. A lot. Are packed and they suck all the air out so that they can ship them. Dylan, I want to do that later with you. Oh, they're, I love how they're different sizes. How do they do these? Is that oh, cool? Is that cool you're carrying around? I'm keeping them. You can keep one. They come in all different shapes and sizes. And they'll be yeah, so we have about 24, 25 rocks or stones from his cremated remains. 23. <laughs> and there's no seams. There's nothing. They're perfect. So, pretty awesome. Texture. That we got him back. I wonder if you can order more bags. I bet I can order more bags. That's a good question for Justin. If we can. Justin. Um, Justin Crow. This is his company. His parting stone. Or we can ask Nicholas. We can ask Nicholas who made Ralph. For in here. I have two. I have two. Well, thank you guys at Parting Stone for this for getting them back to us safely. They're so white. So white. It's amazing. It's like a pearl or a diamond. <laughs> I don't think it looks like a pearl or diamond. But, but it's as shiny as one. It's yeah. not shiny at all. It's very cool. Really Thank you guys. We love this. We love, I love this. This is way better than just a bunch of remains. Yes. That could drop out. Dump everywhere, huh? Yeah, that would be a big And we would have no more of them. Yeah. But this? We have a bunch of them. Yeah. This one cool. gets lost. How's this one? Lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. This is awesome.